You know, a long time ago when I used to have television, I used to love channel surfing. It was one of the few excitements that I got whenever something really crappy came on one of my favorite channels. It was time to explore the television, see what new and exciting things were out there. Oftentimes, if you were lucky enough, you could find a news channel with a car chase, which I did. And then when that fun and excitement was over, when the person got caught by the cops, it was time to channel surf again. And that's when I came upon MTV. Now, I'm not that big a fan of MTV, never have been, never really will be, but I was a fan of one thing, the music video that I saw. And at the time, it just spoke to me. It spoke words to me. I felt love and adoration for it. And then I found out years later it was made into a movie, or at least part of a movie. And I was really excited. I really wanted this now. And it took me years to track it down. In fact, we had to get it off of eBay. Yeah, but it was worth it. It's Daft Punk's Interstellar 5555, the story of the secret star system. But, again, I'm getting ahead of myself. Hello, I'm Andrew Rhodes, and welcome to Andrew Reviews. Interstellar 5555, the story of the secret star system. You're in for a treat. So, Daft Punk's known for making their really great and really powerful music. As my friend mostly puts it, it's stuff you'd hear at a strip club. As for me, I think it's Techno Gold. And one of their best albums, and one of my all-time favorites, was the Discovery album. Ah... <sighs> One more time, aerodynamic, digital love, harder, better, faster, stronger. Come on, they're classics anymore at this point. And if you ever get a chance to check out Discovery, I highly recommend it. Better yet, check out the VEVO or Vivo channel on YouTube. And you could probably catch some of the music videos for it. They're really cool. And if you watch all the music videos for that particular soundtrack, you'll actually have the entire movie, Interstellar 5555. Brought it full circle, huh? Believe it or not, this movie, which I'm just going to call Interstellar 5 to the 4th Power because it's much easier than saying 5555 and screwing it up, it's actually really, really good. Now, there's no talking, there's no speaking, other than the singing. That's right, it's literally every animated music video for this entire soundtrack rolled into a movie. And it's great! Seriously, I enjoy the crap out of this! It came out in May of 2003, and man, oh man, was I psyched. When I finally got my hands on it, I want to say about four or five years ago on eBay. So, the entire thing deals with a group of four music players on an alien planet. They're known as the Crescendals. Or at least that's what they're known as when they come to Earth after they're <clears throat> acquired, a.k.a. kidnapped, by a psychopathic music executive whose idea is to use every single golden record that each and every single artist that they have makes into nothing but a giant portal of evil, which I never really understood. Yeah, the movie could really use some talking points in it. Uh... Seriously, some talking points would have been good for this. Subtitles even would have been good. Something to explain the whole plot of this would have been really good. <sighs> oh, well. Anyway, the Crescendals are kidnapped, and their lackluster defense force, after realizing they screwed up big time by focusing more on the concert than on their jobs actually summons upon their savior. Ah, uh, Shep. He's awoken from his dream about the band's only female member, Stella, when the distress beacon goes out, and the symbol of a guitar, and his guitar ship, with rock and roll music playing in the background. Ah, uh, what more could you want from this? Well, after going through the wormhole and following the evil kidnappers to Earth, Shep's ship crashes. Yes, fortunately it's true. But the badass that he is just walks it off. Okay, well, not without some mental, freaking mental problems, probably. And definitely some fatigue, some injuries, and eh, probably a loss of blood somewhere around the line. But either way, he walks it off like a badass. 
Meanwhile, the Kersen dolls are taken to an underground facility where they're basically mind-screwed and have false memories implanted, making them feel like they were always born on Earth. <laughs> so they found Area 51 then. Basically, they're given this tremendous amount of other stuff and, well, all their information and everything's rewritten. They're risen to fame very quickly, mind you, and become adored by fans. Ah, yes. Unfortunately, Shep manages to free three of the four band members. The one he can't save is the one that he loves the most, because he hesitated for a moment before firing the beam that would separate her from her sunglasses controller. <sighs> I always knew Ray-Bans would be evil someday. Anyway, after some trial and error, they managed to free her in the end, and the four band members decide to put an end to this once and for all. Where they find out the secrets, they find the information, they manage to supposedly defeat the Earl, and after revealing everything to the government, and having their identity shown that they're actually blue people, yeah, yeah, go figure! <laughs> it's actually brought out that they need to go home, which they manage to do, pretty much to, well... A wonderful thing. Now notice how I say four of them because unfortunately Shep dies. So so sad, so tragic. Uh oh well. Anyway, the entire crew manages to get the hell out of Dodge, only for the Earl to pretty much want their uh well, their sorry butts on a platter. They try to basically escape and well they do, managing to get back home where they pretty much play one more time. Yep. Well, they escape with Shep's help again, because his spirit decides, I'm going to save the world and save my friends one more time. Yep. Well, here's the thing, though. Because while this movie's good, the soundtrack is amazingly awesome, the entire thing is given a St. Elsewhere ending. Turns out the whole story, at least it's implied anyway, that a young boy dreamed the thing up, inspired by the Discovery album and his toys. Ah, uh, imagination. I remember when I had that in buttloads growing up. Uh, Ninja Turtles could fly, Transformers could speak different languages, and Power Rangers could do multiple things. Not to mention the fact that I had a whole bunch of small action figures that could pretty much jump over buildings. Ah, imagination. Hmm. Anyway, Interstellar 5555, The Story of the Secret Star System, is actually a really good video. It's a good movie. It runs about 65 minutes, and it's really not bad. It's in English since the actual... Words to the songs, that have them by the way, are in English, it's still a decent way to watch it. Now like I said, there's two different ways you can watch this. Either watch every single music video for the Discovery album, or just find the movie. Because that's the two ways of watching this. Either way, it's up to you. If you want to check this out, try finding it on eBay as it's kind of hard to find, but it's worth it if you do manage to get your hands on it. I'm Andrew Rhodes, this has been Andrew Reviews. Thank you so much for hanging with me, and, well, have a good day.